Thank you. I'll take it, Mary. Thank you so much, Mary. That was uh, enlightening and scary at the same time. Now, at this session, Hack the Human, not just one of our speakers is a TV star. Actually, all of our speakers are TV stars today because our next star, our next speaker, actually stars in a reality television show in the US called True TV. Tiger Team, and the show shows him hacking and sneaking around places like a Lamborghini dealership in LA to steal the Lamborghini under the nose of the manager, also that he could show them how their human vulnerabilities and how susceptible they were to social engineering. This is just like the movie Sneakers. Please help me by welcoming, giving him a warm welcome, Chris Nickerson, please. Thank you. Oh dear. Uh-huh. Hi. First, I have to start off by not going to that slide. Huh, there you go. Um, what a beautiful event, huh? Beautiful stage, amazing crew, an amazing team putting this together. So I want to take a moment to give them a round of applause, please. That's really just a trick to make sure the people that were sleeping think that it was over. Um, and that's kind of what we're going to talk about. I need to give a disclaimer that I'm a hacker. Uh, I came at this from kind of the hacking perspective. I've been an adversary my whole life, as my mother would tell you. Um, but, but really, I don't have the same level of breadth of understanding of the human mind uh, that Mary clearly does that Chris manipulates regularly to try and shock and awe people. Uh, I, I do it professionally because I saw that there was this huge landscape that was out there of things to attack. And while we've talked about the landscape of IoT, and we've talked about the landscape of computers and internet, and hyperconnectivity, and every other buzzword that we've talked about here, there's a lot of things in the room that are really easy to attack that are not powered by batteries. So I want to take a look at that a little bit deeper. This is my kind of lineage of trying to do some of these things professionally, both at law, uh, at Shook, Hardy & Bacon, large telecommunications companies, moving on to larger breadth of distributors. Uh, but what I really found through this is that I was just looking at it from a hacker's perspective. I wanted to see exactly how far I could get with the limited amount of information that I had. So, what is this social engineering thing? It's something that somebody's talked about many, many times. Oh, it's, it's phishing. Uh, well, no, not really. Uh, oh, oh it's, uh, it's when you lie to people. No, that's acting. Um, what, what exactly is it? In, in reality, it isn't even deception. This is one of my favorite pictures. Uh, Lou Bowen, anybody seen some of his photography before? Can you see the person in the middle? It's fantastic. And it shows you that even your eyes can be tricked, right? No matter how much you're paying attention, at first glance, you might completely miss what's going on, and it doesn't matter how trained you really are. We can look at that picture over and over again, and as we start to see the face and the shoulders, as we start to see the center line of his dress and attire, you start to realize that he's actually painted into the picture. But when you first saw it, was he there? Now we get to the idea of the tree falling in the woods. If I was walking into your data center as the electrician, and you thought I was an electrician, was I ever there? And it's complicated to really think about because no level of IDS is ever going to detect me because that human barrier is gone. I've actually erased it from your memory because it's so common and it's so normal to see these types of things that you won't even remember that it happened. So what does it mean? Uh, chutzpah is a service, yeah? Can I just walk in and go into somewhere and say, give me all the things? Maybe. But is that a repeatable process? Is that social engineering? So I like to take a look at dictionaries to try and figure out words because I'm not very smart, unlike all of you guys. 
I have to try and be taught these things. So I look at it as social narrative, being able to intercommunicate with people, having to do with society, and engineering, a repeatable process. This is not just a basic lie, right? This is not just me going and willing my way into it or using my skills to try and manipulate someone into a presence or presence. This is me actually understanding exactly what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it, much like an attack structure, right? This is basic structures of attack that are repeatable, that are fundamentals of engineering. Myself living as an attacker, running a team of attackers all over the world for the last 20 plus years of my life, writing standards on how to attack people, I looked at how to attack humans the same way. We need to gather intelligence about them, we need to threat model and understand where their vulnerabilities exist, and then we need exploitation. We need to be able to find that tipping point between where do the vulnerabilities exist and how am I going to move to the next stage. Once I've moved to the next stage, I need to be able to get the access to the information I need and then pull back and make sure that I can regain my access. Right? It's an interesting thing to think about that goes well beyond a lie because sometimes I'll get to a point where I know the building security is so advanced that I'm not going to be able to do it the first try. So what do I do? I fail intentionally in the beginning. I walk into the building late at night. Somebody says, oh, sir, we need to have your credentials. I say, oh, man, I, I forgot them. Well, you need to have credentials to get in the building. Uh, okay, but my boss is going to tear me up because there's a server down and blah, blah, blah. And they, sir, you, really, you, you have to have credentials. I can't let you in. Uh, okay, well, can I call my boss and can I let him tell you? Now, meanwhile, all I'm doing is poking for holes. It's like a port scan. I'm trying to find where the vulnerabilities are. Even though I know I'm destined to fail in this exercise, I've started to identify where the vulnerabilities exist. I move through that exercise. They say, look, you can't get in. Go back, get your badge. You can figure it out. Okay, no problem. Now, instead of coming back that night, knowing the guard's schedule, knowing what's going on for the guard, I come back the next night. This night, I have a fake badge because I was able to go to a copy center and print a copy of a badge with my beautiful face on it and go, hey guys, here's my badge. I'm back, one more night of work. And they go, oh, Chris, nice to see you again. Come on through. No need to check my credentials. Why? Because I've already anchored myself in their memory. They already know that I've had a tough time getting in. And the thing that they said to do was my exploit. Excuse me, computer, how do I get in? Oh, you need a username and password. No problem. Next day, I come back. Sir, what do you need? Oh, you need a badge. Oh, fine, I'll be back. Come back with my badge. Great, authenticated, run right through. This is a repeatable process. You're trying to identify what's going on in the mind during these situations in order to get the most effectiveness for every piece of speech that you have. Interestingly enough, speech is almost irrelevant. When you look at the human mind and what we do and how we do it, speech is only about 7% of all of our communication. 7%. Now granted, I'm sure my wife will tell you different that words mean something, but it's true that this is a very, very small way of how people communicate. Most of how we communicate are all nonverbals. And the reason for that is because Unlike IoT, which is supposed to be smart, those devices make a couple calculations a second. Our brain makes trillions of calculations a second. You know, the last time that they did the uh, scientific study for IBM, uh, and they were trying to identify what the processing power of the brain was, they said it was somewhere around 38 petaflops. That's wicked. So if somebody wants to tell me their advanced computer system, is so much harder to hack, I refer to them at the stats of the human mind. I refer to them to the fact that our eyes have been calculated somewhere in the neighborhood of about 127 million megapixels. That doesn't sound like a very slow and non-advanced computer to me, but wow, what an opportunity there is to hack there. I mean, if it runs that fast, it must be able to do all sorts of things, meaning we could put infinite number of things into the channel in order to exploit. How do we do it? Port scanning, just like you would in a network. 
how things taste, how they look, what they sound like, how they smell, even what they feel like. And if we can go through all of these different topics and we can start breaking down what the journey of this looks like, you get to a big eye chart. But my experience with these is I started looking at this from, all right, physical, what does that mean? Well, everybody breathes. So I went to India and I studied breathing because I needed to know how I could breathe with someone because this was a nonverbal that created trust. I could learn how to breathe out of trust with someone. I could learn to take someone's aggression, pace them and breathe just breathing and move them into a different state. And by that state, I'm beginning to run my exploit by using things like family therapy, by using neuro-linguistic programming, by looking at different gestalt therapies and transformational grammar and reading loads of Chomsky books and everything else. You start to learn these wonderful tricks of the mind. And speaking of tricks of the mind, I don't know if anyone's ever seen Darren Brown, but one of my favorite magicians ever. Right? Darren works not only on sleight of hand, but how do you anchor these things? There's a great video showing him using some sound anchoring techniques to prove that he could win on a losing ticket at a horse track. And he does it over and over and over again. Now granted, I don't normally get paid that way, but for fun, you can do it. Exploitation. Now we're really getting to the meat. How do I take all of these different techniques of breathing with someone and looking like someone and push that into a point where I'm able to get access? You know, this was a moment a while ago where just wearing a shirt got us access to a data center. Now, how? Well, the guard who was at the data center vehemently was like, there's no possible way you're getting in. I said, well, look, you know, I understand there's been some power problems in the data center. We're here from you know, Dominion Power. We're trying to gain access to the facility. We don't want any servers or anything else to go down. He contested me over and over and over again. But what happened? I had noticed that through reading someone's email while we were doing some of the external testing, that they were having a problem with the Eaton power system. Their Liebert was making these unawful noises. I sent an email inside the chain from one of the guys in supply chain management to the person in the data center through the email saying, oh, we have guys from the power company there. I bet they can help you. They also work on these power systems. Instantly, within one minute, someone runs from the data center and they're like, oh, thank God you're here. And I'm like, you're right. Thank God I am here. And they rush us into the data center and he's like, this noise has been driving me crazy, what do I do? And I simply walked over to the audio button and I pushed it and I held it. I had no idea if it would work. And I let go and the, and the noise stopped. And he's like, okay, you're the best, do anything you want. The funniest part about it is that I went a little bit further to make sure I could maintain my persistence and by doing that, I picked up the phone and I called the actual company that they were trying to get for service and I started screaming at them on the phone. I can't believe you're gonna let this data center go down and not send technicians out here. What is your problem? And the guy's in the corner and he's like, get him. And so he's screaming and yelling and cheering me on and as that happens, I've now created access forever. All it took was a simple t-shirt. When I look at it and I deconstruct it, I'm able to pick all of these different things that I was doing throughout the entire time. It wasn't a simple lie, it was planned. And by using that plan and executing on the plan, I'm able to not only get access, but maintain access forever. That's it, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Actually, Chris, I have a question for you. If, uh, so just one short question. So this is the first time you're here at Tel Aviv in Cyber Week. What are you the most excited about this year at Cyber Week? It's a plug. Um, I well, what am kind of excited. plug what are you talking about? I am excited <laughs> about all of the people here, all of the sharing here, and close to my personal heart, I'm super excited for B-Sides. B-Sides. <laughs> so Chris is one <laughs> of you. the global founders of the B-Sides hacker movement, and tomorrow he will be opening the main B-Sides session. And now, thank you so much, Chris. Thank you, Karen. And without further ado, I'll introduce our next guest, another television star. 